All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the different organelles of the cell and finish up this part of the chapter. Uh, so really when we're looking at uh, the cell, we've talked about the membrane and the cytoplasm. What we're going to talk about now is the different organelles that are found within this cell. Uh, when we're looking at the organelles, we're going to see that there's really two main types. You have the non-membranous organelles. These are the ones that do not have that phospholipid bilayer surrounding those particular organelles. So like it says here, things like the cytoskeleton, some other cellular structures like microvilli, along with a few other organelles that we would find within the cell. Uh, so looking at these ones, the cytoskeleton is basically what it sounds like. It is uh, a number of different fibers and tubules that help to provide support to the cell. They help move around the organelles, uh, are involved in cell division and moving materials throughout the cell. Uh, attached to the membrane, uh, as well as going throughout the, through the interior of the cell. Uh, the, again, like I said, a number of different structures on this one. So we have microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. Uh, the microfilaments are the smallest ones. Uh, we'll talk about the protein actin a little bit later on, uh, but it's made up of these actin polymers that are twisted around one another and is found throughout the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. Again, it helps to hold the cell shape We'll talk about microvilli, that these are finger-like extensions of the plasma membrane to increase surface area for absorption. Uh, these help form the support network for that. Uh, they're involved in the moving of the membrane for cell division and also are going to be involved in things. It's one of the filaments that we'll see actually that's specifically in muscle contraction when we get to muscle cells. Uh, you can see kind of some of these filaments in the cytoskeleton. This is an electron micrograph showing those ones. Intermediate filaments, obviously the ones in the middle. They're a little bit, like it says, they're more rigid than microfilaments. Uh, again, helps stabilize the cell junctions as well as hold the cell's shape a little bit more. Uh, microtubules are the large ones here. Hollow cylinders, you see these sometimes also inside of cilia and flagella. Uh, like I said, made of the tubulin protein. Uh, can be changed somewhat based on need. And this shows you some of these lit up for different microtubules and microfilaments. Again, help hold the shape together. Again, a component of some of those transport structures like cilia, like flagella. Uh, we also see this helping to move different vesicles throughout the cell when we're moving substances around in the cell. And is also involved in moving the chromosomes during mitosis, which we will talk about later on. Uh, again, one of the things these that help make up are another structure that we want to talk about of non-membranous structures. These are the microvilli. These are finger-like extensions that are much shorter than cilia. And what these do is increase the surface area of the cell. Uh, generally, we're going to see these in cells that we're going to be doing a lot of absorption in, so things like the small intestine. More surface area means more ability to absorb nutrients or products through that cell membrane. The centrosome is a structure that is particularly important during cell division. Uh, these help form what are called mitotic spindles, which are going to help actually organize and move around the chromosomes during cell division so that we get an actual set of chromosomes in each new daughter cell. And you can kind of see here, the hemi, they look kind of like pasta, you know, like a little weird rigatoni type of thing or something. And you can kind of see those microtubules that make them up. Uh, other things we'll see, cilia, you see this on a number of different cells. These are a number of different longer extensions that are motile. They can kind of do this movement that moves something across and then reset. Uh, I always use the analogy of crowd surfing. Cilia move stuff past cells, kind of like when somebody crowd surfs, all these hands moving somebody throughout the crowd on that one. Uh, flagella is a single one. It's usually a bit longer. It looks more like a tail, and it's going to be able to do a swimming motion much like a... Uh, and you see these on sperm cells, but much like an alligator's tail would allow it to swim that back and forth that allows it to be motile. And that is really, honestly, the only cell that we see these on. Uh, one of the last ones here we're going to talk about is the ribosome. Uh, ribosomes are made up of both protein and ribonucleic acid. These can be found attached to other membranous organelles, such as the endoplasmic reticulum. At that point, we call it the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We also see these floating free within the cytoplasm. In both cases, what they're doing is protein synthesis. These are going to be taking messenger RNA that comes from the nucleus and converting that to proteins 
through the process of translation, which you've all probably talked about at one point or another in a biology course. Uh, the proteasome is, I think, the last one on this list here. Uh, it is something that we can target stuff through a, using a protein called ubiquitin that we can target to this, and this is going to be uh, something that can digest organelles and break them down. And this is just kind of showing you a cylinder-like protein. You put this ubiquitin molecule on these proteins. It targets them to this, and it's, I mean, if you really want to think about it, kind of like a garbage disposal. It's going to send these things in here. It's going to degrade them, break them down into their fragments. So the members organelles, what differentiates these is they are all made up of and have a membrane of that phospholipid bilayer. And with the exception of the mitochondria, they are also all part of this uh, kind of what is called the endomembrane system, where they can start out in one organelle, a piece of it can kind of blab off, go someplace else, merge with something else, a piece of that can go off along with stuff from the cell membrane going in, merging with a lysosome or something else like that. So the mitochondria are the only ones that don't really do that. Uh, in terms of the endoplasmic reticulum, these are found generally around the nucleus, so in that paranuclear region, uh, close to that. Uh, main thing in these ones, if it has ribosomes embedded on the surface, it is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it's involved in making protein, making proteins that are generally be targeted to the membrane or outside the cell. If it doesn't have that, it is called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and it is involved more with carbohydrate and lipid synthesis and modification. Uh, you can see a picture of it here. The one with the ribosomes embedded in it versus the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You can see the lateral micrograph on the right, the ones with the bumps and the ones missing the bumps. Again, rough ER and smooth ER. And you can see the difference on these two model, on these two pictures right here. Uh, again, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, this is involved in protein synthesis, involved with targeting stuff into a vesicle and moving that throughout the cell, maybe to the Golgi or other areas throughout here. Uh, we also make our perioxisomes here, one of these other ones that we'll talk about in a little bit. So you can see the rough endoplasmic reticulum, again, generally close to the nucleus because it is going to be getting that messenger RNA from the nucleus as its instructions. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it is generally pretty close to that rough endoplasmic reticulum, but again, more in terms of carbohydrate and lipid metabolism on these ones as well as drug detoxification. Uh, certain cells that are going to do a lot of synthesis of the lipid type molecules, for example, like testosterone, you see a lot of this in the testes. Uh, so cells that do a lot, or not cells, but organs that do a lot of detoxification, you're also going to see cells in those organs being very plentiful. So for example, the hepatocytes in the liver have a large amount of smooth endoplasmic reticulum in them. Again, showing you the picture of it right here, a little bit further out than that rough endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi apparatus, to me, this is kind of like a UPS warehouse. What this is going to do is going to take vesicles from generally the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, they're going to go into one side of this one, and this is going to help repackage and retarget them. So they go in on the one side called the cis face. They're going to receive on that side. They're going to get repackaged and then targeted to where they're going out the trans phase. Uh, that's kind of the shipping side of this one. Again, modifying, packaging, sorting. That's what it's doing to these different proteins. It may send stuff to the membrane. Many send stuff to lysosomes. Uh, that's really what this involved in a lot of repackaging and targeting of different proteins to the areas of the cell or outside the cell that need them. And to me, they kind of look like a stack of silver dollar pancakes. You get these little flat pancakes here, little pads of butter surrounding them. Kind of what it looks like in the cell. And again, this is kind of goes through the whole process of how it can do that and retarget them. I'm not going to ask you all of that, but you need to understand what the Golgi does. Lysosomes are kind of like a digestive organ of the cell. Uh, these can take uh, a number of things that are taken in by the cell, break it down. We have a lot of digestive enzymes that are contained in this organelle to keep the cell from digesting parts of itself. It's actually one of the things that can happen if we need the cell to undergo program cell death or apoptosis, a lot of times it is about opening up these lysosomes and letting those digestive enzymes take apart the cell. 
And you can kind of see this idea right here. So you take a, something in from the outside, it merges into the lysosome, we can reabsorb some of it, get rid of the stuff we don't need. We can lyse it to kill the cell. Uh, we can digest other organelles, take those in, again, reabsorb stuff we need, get rid of stuff we don't want from it. But again, keeping this housed in a particular organelle so it doesn't cause problems. The peroxisomes, uh, really the last of the endomembrane system here, these are ones that are dealing with uh, reactive oxygen species. Uh, we have a lot of oxidative enzymes in here, but it sounds like peroxide, hydrogen peroxide is a reactive oxygen species. These are involved in detoxification, uh, produces a lot of hydrogen peroxide, which is honestly really nasty to parts of the cell, so we keep it housed in a particular organelle. I see a lot of these, again, in detoxifying organs, such as the liver. And as I was already kind of saying, these are all part of the endomembrane system. Pieces of the membrane on each of these ones can kind of bleb off, merge with something else, bleb off that later on, merge with something else. You can kind of see, you can start on the ER, become a vesicle, go to the Golgi. Sooner or later become a vesicle, leaves the Golgi, goes to the cell membrane, could be merged up the cell membrane, go to the lysosome. That is what we mean by this endomembrane system, is that those pieces of membrane on this are continually kind of blebbing off of something, merging with something else. Uh, the last membranous organelle doesn't participate in this endomembrane system here. It is the mitochondria. Uh, you can kind of see here has an inner and outer membrane on this. This is involved in ATP synthesis. Uh, anytime you've watched a video in biology, they probably said in, uh, the mitochondria, the power plant of the cell. Uh, they kind of divide separately of other stuff here. They actually have their own DNA, have their own chromosome, have their own ribosomes that are all slightly different than the normal cells. Uh, it's thought that this is from way back in evolution, uh, a cell engulfed one of these it's basically a bacteria like structure that's inside our cells and instead of killing it kind of kept it there and really the last thing to talk about is the nucleus this is the largest structure in the cell usually the easiest thing to see if you stain the cell it is kind of the ceo of the cell or the control center of this one uh usually have one per cell Certain skeletal muscle cells have multiple ones. There is also certain cells like red blood cells that do not have nuclei. Uh, shape of the nucleus is pretty similar to the shape of the cell a lot of times, but a lot of times circle or ovoid in shape. Uh, has a phospholipid bilayer that is surrounding this called the nuclear envelope. It is much more selective than the cell membrane. Uh, the fluid inside of this is the nucleoplasm. And we're going to see that there is little openings in this envelope called nuclear pores. They kind of act like an assistant, kind of, you can go in to see the nucleus. No, the nucleus is not going to see anybody today or is not seeing you today. They're going to be that kind of selective thing that determines what can get into the CEO's office or not. Uh, certain things can go in and out of the nucleus. Other things are not going to be able to. Within the nucleus, we have what is called the nucleolus. It is a darker staining region of the nucleus. It is where we're making a lot of ribosomal RNA. Uh, this is where those ribosomes are being built. Uh, again, not present in all cells there. Certain cells you'll see a lot of this. Other ones you won't see much at all because they're not producing much in the way of proteins. So you can kind of see the nucleus here with the nucleolus, the nucleoplasm around here, the envelope with the pores found throughout it. And really when we're looking at the chromosomes, we have linear chromosomes that are condensed or super condensed. So when you get a one ready for division, you're going to see it's super condensed like this. Normally you have this slightly condensed form of DNA called chromatin, which is the semi-condensed form of that.